We're so happy to be here. I'm Kim Goff Cruz, and I'm, it's my privilege to welcome you on this really beautiful day as we honor our veterans. Throughout its history, Yale has been home to men and women who have dedicated their lives to the service of their countries. We join together today to pay them tribute and to reflect on the freedoms and privileges that their sacrifices have made possible. We are honored to have among us students, faculty, and staff, as well as alumni who have served or are preparing to serve. Thank you for being here with us today. Thank you, all of you. During our ceremony, you will hear from a staff member and a current student. And in this year of celebrating women, we will also honor three women who have supported and advocated for Yale veterans. We have a long history of military leadership and advocacy at this university that includes not only the three extraordinary women we are going to recognize today, but also women like Rear Admiral Grace Hopper, for whom a Yale Residential College is named, and of course our own Linda Lorimer, our former secretary and vice president. As many of you know, Linda is the daughter of a Navy Rear Admiral and is a lifelong advocate for our men and women in service to our country. After many years of quiet remembrance of our veterans, Linda initiated this event, an official university ceremony that publicly recognizes the importance and the contributions of veterans and what they make for our lives at the university. Linda was also instrumental in the return of the Naval and Air, Air Force ROTC to Yale in 2012. And we can all see the ROTC cadets and midshipmen now. They are firmly established within the fabric of our university culture. They are welcome, and they are welcome and common sight on campus as they move between the classroom, labs, laboratories, and libraries, as well as their extracurricular activities the residential colleges, and of course, their military commitments. So we're really grateful to have her here with us today. Our speakers, presenters, and honorees represent commitment to honor and country across multiple generations and conflicts. They represent all the veterans here with us today and those who care for them. When today has passed, and we return to our busy lives, I hope that all of us will continue to remember the men and women of Yale who have faithfully served and taken their oaths to protect and to serve. It is now my pleasure to introduce President Peter Salovey, who will share his thoughts about our treasured veterans. President Salovey. Thank you, Kim, and thank you, everyone, for being here. It's really quite wonderful to see so many people gathered here to recognize Veterans Day. To all of our current and former servicemen and servicewomen who are here today, thank you. You have our deepest gratitude and respect. Here with us today are faculty, staff, students, and alumni who are veterans. That legacy of service continues today with the students who are currently in the Reserve Officers Training Corps on our campus. We're proud of the many men and women who have served their country honorably over three centuries. We think of Nathan Hale, Yale College Class of 1773, perhaps the most famous alumnus to serve in the American Revolution. At 21, he made history when he said, I only regret that I have but one life to lose for my country. Others are perhaps less well known to us. Cortland Van Rensselaer Creed also made history. He was the first African American to earn his medical degree from Yale, graduating in 1857. As soon as the shots rang out over Fort Sumter, he wrote the governor of Connecticut asking for a commission, eager to defend his country. Dr. Creed was rejected on the basis of his skin color. But when black men were accepted into the Union Army in 1863, he began writing again and again, 
until he received a commission as acting surgeon of the 30th Connecticut Volunteers. He served for the war's duration. Like Dr. Creed, another remarkable Yale alumnus was determined to serve, Grace Hopper, who received her master's and PhD in mathematics from Yale. After the bombing of Pearl Harbor, she tried to enlist, but was rejected because of her age and small size. Hopper persisted, eventually receiving a waiver to join the Women's U.S. Naval Reserve. She used her mathematical abilities to develop computers that aided in top secret calculations essential to the war effort. In 1946, the Navy declined her request for a regular commission due to her age, but she remained a naval reservist for 20 years. And then she was recalled to active service for another 19 years. Amazing Grace Hopper retired from the Navy as Rear Admiral at the age of 79, the oldest serving officer in the U.S. Armed Forces. Hopper received many awards and honorary degrees in her lifetime, but she would often say, I have already received the highest possible award, the privilege and responsibility of serving in the United States Navy. Today and every day, we are inspired by the example of our veterans and military service men and women. And we remember their extraordinary sacrifices in service to this country. Yale is proud to support our veterans through the Yale Veterans Network, a campus group for students, faculty, and staff, and the Yale Veterans Association, an alumni organization. We want to support all our veterans, and so I'm asking for your help. Employees can log into Workday to self-identify as a veteran if they wish to do so. This is part of our Veterans Count at Yale initiative. It's not required, but it helps us give back to those who have given so much to our country. Thank you for joining us here today. Thank you for helping us to honor our veterans. Thanks so much. Thank you. I now call upon the officers of the Yale University Police Department, who serve as our color guard. Please stand as you are able as they offer the presentation of the colors, followed by the playing of our national anthem. And we're going to ask you to remain standing for our invocation.
grand architect of the universe, called by many names, in many languages, by many voices. Today we ask that your guiding hands hold us and all sisters and brothers in military service near. We are grateful for all who now serve, all who have served, and for those who, in the words of Abraham Lincoln, gave the last full measure of devotion in service of their country. We are joined in humility, gratitude, and our own measure of devotion, knowing that as we seek to comprehend a complex world, we are sheltered by the vigilant service of citizens to our republic. We ask special regard for those who have served but who have not yet been found and returned home, and for those who have returned but who have yet to find themselves at home. We honor our military and ask that whatever is required of them be informed by your infinite wisdom, the lux et veritas, as they nobly and loyally seek to create a peaceful and secure future for us all. Good afternoon. As many of you know, we celebrate Veterans Day on November 11th in remembrance of the armistice that ended the First World War. An armistice that was signed on the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month, 101 years ago today. And it is on this great day that I stand before you, an Asian immigrant from Korea, the South Side, that <laughs> that came to the United States at the age of eight, not speaking any English. And from the bottom of my heart, I'm grateful to this nation, a nation that has accepted somebody like me, a nation that represents hope and unity, a nation that has epitomized the phrase, the land of opportunity, and a nation that I had the pleasure of serving in the United States Marine Corps. Like many, my enlistment into the Marine Corps came after a recruiter stopped by at my high school. The professionalism, the charisma, but most importantly, his uniform <laughs> caught the attention of my 18-year-old self who didn't really know what he wanted to do in life quite yet. And that night over dinner, I told my mom what had happened at school, all the while hinting at the possibility that I was thinking about joining the United States military. She asked me what branch of service I was considering, and when I told her the Marine Corps, her response to me was, you think the Marines just take anybody? <laughs> <laughs> so the very next day, without telling her, I skipped school to go to the recruiting office and signed all of the necessary documents required for enlistment. And four years of honorable service and two deployments later, I can confidently say the answer to my mother's question is yes. <laughs> it turns out the Marines will take just about anyone because they know how to train individuals to become Marines. First, they'll break them down, then they'll mold them, and they'll shape them into painfully regretting their decision to enlist <laughs> with 5 a.m. PT runs, weekly inspections of your squad day for cleanliness, and just to keep the morale high and to show the Marines the beauty of the Santa Margarita Mountains of Camp Pendleton, they'll take you on hikes. <laughs> like a lot of hikes. <laughs> then at the end of it all, you're presented with the Eagle Globe and Anchor, signifying your acceptance into the ranks of the finest fighting force in America. And in the Marine Corps, I served as an amphibious assault vehicle mechanic entrusted with fixing AAVs, which are essentially just tanks that operate on land and in water. And after MOS school, I entered into the Fleet Marine Force and learned something new about myself. But before I tell you this revelation, you have to understand that I signed up for the only amphibious occupation in the Marine Corps. <laughs> and this revelation of mine would arrive just 10 minutes 
out in the ocean during my first amphibious operation. As it turns out, I suffer from severe motion sickness out at sea. <laughs> Not something you want to find out as an amphibious vehicle mechanic after you had just became a mechanic. So for all of your future officers in the room, please hang out on a boat for a day or two before deciding to join the Navy or the Marine Corps. <laughs> now, I could stand up here and tell you about my own personal achievements, or lack thereof, but, there's, but what's, much, what's much more important than that are the people that I met while I was in service. And on this Veterans Day, I want to highlight the camaraderie and sacrifice that is shared by those who served. See, it was in the Marine Corps that I met someone for the first time in my life that was willing to take the time to walk me through something step by step until I fully understood it. Selfless individuals like Corporal Jared Morris, who for months stayed behind a few extra hours every night to teach me the fundamentals of my job. It was people like Corporal Justin Farnsworth, who was famous in our battalion for never leaving the maintenance bay until the job he was working on was finished. And these were the people that I aspired to be like one day. NCOs that were dictionary definitions of what it meant to be a Marine, embodying honor, courage, and commitment, not only in the work that they did, but in ensuring that the lower ranks, through continued mentorship, would be prepared to fill their shoes upon promotion. And after about a year and a half, I was promoted to the rank of corporal and had become so proficient at my job that my call sign was Echo 4 Yankee Whiskey which stood for Yellow Wizard. But in all fairness, my gunnery sergeant, gunnery sergeant Gaeta, was ghetto chicken, so I think I got off pretty easy. <laughs> and it was through this promotion that I realized the importance of putting in the long hours and never giving up on myself, and discovered that if I put in the work, I can reach my full potential. It was the life lessons, the experiences, and the successes in the Marine Corps that gave me the confidence to go back to school. And as fate would have it, in my first math class back in community college, I met Petty Officer Second Class Jonathan Kong, a Silver Star recipient for his heroism in Afghanistan, and a corpsman who, come to find out, was on the same ship that I was on deployment. He told me that he had just been accepted to Dartmouth and that if I wanted, he would mentor me. And when I said no, when I graciously accepted, he said, trust me, you're going to get into Yale. And it turns out that he was right. See, while here, I wanted to give back not only to my fellow veterans, but to the larger community. And to reach that goal, I've been a mentor for other veterans seeking higher education. I started a winter clothing drive to provide warm clothes for the homeless in New Haven and held a conference at the Omni Hotel just last month shedding light on the issue of wartime sexual violence against women. And on this 101st anniversary of Armistice Day, I'd like to thank President Salovey and Secretary Goff Cruz for holding this ceremony, and to Dean Sodi for recommending me to give these remarks. And I'm honored to continue the proud legacy of veterans here at Yale, the young men returning from World War I and World War II, and young men and women of more recent conflicts who have used their time at Yale to better serve their communities, the nation, and the world. Happy Veterans Day.
Good afternoon. After such a poignant playing of taps to remember those who have gone before, we turn to honor those who are very much with us. It's a particular delight to be here as we celebrate our veterans and all who support them with a special shout out for those who are the partners and spouses of our veterans and those who are the children who are such an important ingredient in every military family. I've had the honor of co-chairing the group organizing the year-long events in recognition of these dual anniversaries of women at Yale, the 50 Women at Yale 150 movement, and thus it was particularly gratifying that our Yale Veterans Day Committee decided that they wanted this celebration to be a part of the year-long event and wanted to devote this year's awards to honoring those women at Yale who have done so much to advance the work of our veterans and to advance veterans at Yale. I'd like to share a little bit about each of our three honorees, these remarkable women, and then we'll ask them to come forward to, so we can thank them collectively. The first is Dr. Norma Thompson. She's a senior lecturer in the humanities, the associate director of the Whitney Humanities Center, and the director of the undergraduate studies program in the humanities in Yale College. She also has been a key architect and constant contributor to the Warrior Scholar Program. As many of you know, the Warrior Scholar Project was started right here at Yale by students and graduates to help enlisted veterans transition to higher education. The work started here at Yale, but now extends across the country to 20 universities. Today, one and two week academic boot camps in the humanities and STEM fields are conducted at top universities. And these have helped to prepare literally thousands of veterans to be successful as they begin or return to college. Norma serves on the National Academic Board of Directors for the Warrior Scholar Project and designed the original curriculum for the pilot program here at Yale in 2012. She's been a lecturer in the Yale program every summer since and can be found also daily eating with our veterans as they are, are getting acclimated to higher education again. So she provides support way beyond her outstanding contributions in the classroom. Patricia Way is a champion for veterans a champion for veterans in her role as associate director in Yale College Admissions and for Veterans Outreach. She's recognized nationally for her work in recruiting and also supporting vet veterans with very high potential to succeed in a rigorous academic environment. She's been instrumental in increasing the number of veterans enrolled in Yale College's Eli Whitney Students Program. As she and I were visiting, I was remembering when we had zero veterans in this program. How wonderful now that we are close to having a score. That program, of course, supports students to come here who are resuming their education after several years of interruption. Patricia travels extensively to community colleges, to military bases, and works with Service to School, a national nonprofit organization, that helps veterans apply to colleges and universities. But in addition to recruiting veterans here, Patricia Maine's deep relationships, a real network across this university, both administrators and faculty, to create literally a network that veterans can walk into once they do matriculate here. As one of our colleagues said, she is a great collaborator as well as contributor to veterans who are here at Yale. The third woman we recognize today is a 20 plus year staff veteran of Yale and a veteran leader for our university. Lori Raseel is a director of finance at the Yale School of Nursing. She is an army veteran herself and the co-founder and former co-chair of the Yale Veterans Network, the Yale Staff Affinity Group. And I must say, it is so wonderful to look out at this audience and see many in that network who have really been such contributors to Yale through the service during your tenure here, as well as service to our country. Lori is a third generation veteran and also a second generation Yale staff person. She's a passionate advocate for veterans, 
Her leadership has positioned, Laura, has positioned Yale through her work as an employer of choice for those who have served our nation. But she does so many more to have the veterans, if you will, mark be known by our greater community. She recently helped organize the Yale Football Heroes Day at the Yale Bowl. This yearly event brings together veterans from the Eastern Blind Rehabilitation Center with our own Yale veterans and ROTC cadets, midshipmen, and officers for an afternoon of football, camaraderie, and patriotism. Lori's contributions to the greater New Haven community and to Yale go even further. Twice a year, she organizes a group to clean up the New Haven Veterans Memorial, a true labor of love, I think, and the annual collection of items for the Marines, the Toys for Tots drive, is just a way in which she, with so many others, can signal to our larger community the ongoing service that our veterans uh, provide. These are just a few examples of Lori's activities that embrace and showcase veteran service. These three women, through their hard work, commitment, and dedication, make the lives of our veterans better and make Yale, through that, a better place. We undoubtedly, in so many ways, are a stronger university because of the growing complement of veterans who are here as matriculated students and who are here in so many important roles on our staff and faculty. Lori, Patricia, and Norma, please step forward so we can thank you and present you with certificates of appreciation and some military coins, small token of our regard for how you have changed the lives of veterans and this place for the better.
My sisters and brothers, let us go forth from the sacred space with grateful hearts for the service and sacrifice of our veterans and their families. Let us never forget all they have done to protect freedom and human rights. As we seek to grow closer to the abiding peace our loving Creator intends for us, may we come to know a peace born from wisdom and understanding, a peace nurtured with compassion and mercy, a peace strengthened by courage and commitment. And may we be blessed this day and every day by the shimmering light of our God who creates, sustains, and embraces all life. Amen. We're about to retire our colors, and as soon as we do that, that will conclude our Veterans Day ceremony. Many thanks to the planning committee and our ceremony participants, especially Tom Duffy and the Yale School of Music Brass Quintet, a quartet rather, sorry. Yeah. Thank you so much. So again, we're gonna retire the colors and please um, stay with us and then that will conclude our services. So thank you for coming. <laughs>